This video is a guide for newbies who are about to head to their first post-apocalyptic life event and have no idea what to take with them. I'm not talking about your pretty LARP kit, I'm talking about stuff which fulfill your basic necessities. Sleeping, eating, staying clean, not dying and having fun are the basic necessities on a post-apocalyptic life event. I have my kit right here and I will show you what's inside and why I believe that those things are necessary for your survival and for having fun on a post apple life event. Let's go! If you just want the packing list without watching the whole video for details, you'll find this graphic I made for you. This video was made possible by my Patreon supporters. If you also want to become a supporter, check out the first link in the video description. Alright, before we unpack, let's actually establish what we have packed for here. What we did not pack for is a real-life survival scenario. All the stuff I have in here would be considered luxury in a real apocalyptic situation. So this is not about real survival, this is about packing to have convenience and fun on your first post-apocalyptic LARP. There are LARP veterans who pack a truck full of awesome stuff. As a first-timer newbie, you don't need all of that stuff. All you need actually does fit into one backpack. And we are also planning for delays and eventualities. For example, if you're going to a LARP where it says there will be food and water all the time, it still might happen that uh, there isn't for some uh, amount of time. At the same time, we're not over planning. So uh, if it says there is gonna be water on the LARP, we're not bringing all the water we would need, just a part of it. We also want to avoid uh, losing time on LARP. For example, if you cut yourself and go to the medic tent and wait for the medic uh, and uh, you only need to actually get a band-aid which you could have brought with you, it would be a waste of time. You would be wasting valuable time which you could spend LARPing or enjoying the festival. So we are also pegging for that. Now let's get to the first necessity, which is sleep. In order to sleep, you need something to sleep on. For that, I usually take a, a sleeping mat like this. A much better choice would be a field bed. Uh, it will be much easier on your back. So if you can bring a field bed, do that. But a sleeping mat is sufficient. Also, depending on the event you are going to, you should bring a tent. For example, on Old Town you should bring a tent, on some other LARPs you're sleeping in buildings and you don't need a tent. Uh, if you're gonna be buying a new tent, uh, do yourself a favor and get a good one, because getting a cheap tent uh, is unnecessary. If you're buying a cheap tent and you know it's gonna be raining, you might as well just save even more money and just bring an inflatable swimming pool, because that's exactly what your tent is gonna be if it's not a quality product. You will of course need a sleeping bag, so what I have here is like for a mid-range of temperatures. It is pretty much good for uh, autumn temperatures, it's not that good for winter temperatures. And here I also have my sleeping clothing, a uh, thick woolen sweater. German army standard uh, underwear from the last generation. My sleeping pants. Uh, sleeping socks. I put them on top of another pair of regular fresh socks when I go to sleep. A sleeping hat. So this one is really awesome because uh, it also protects the ears. And in the morning when the sun is shining into my eyes I can just do this. This is a, a German army hat from the last generation of equipment. Uh, those are awesome. But if you can't get one of those, basically get any sort of hat and uh, ear covers. So these uh, sleeping items, I always leave them in the sleeping bag. I don't put them on for LARPing. I don't put them on to go outside of the tent or uh, of my room, wherever I'm sleeping. These are supposed to always be dry and clean. Earplugs. So here we have German Army Standard uh, issue earplugs. And here we have some soft, malleable ones, which are not as hard on your ear. You can basically leave them inside of your ear for the whole night, it won't hurt as much. The reason for this is you might end up sleeping near a generator or uh, there might be some action going on all night and you still want to sleep. So uh, in my experience these are really important. 
In case you are going to a LARP where you are gonna need a tent, I recommend using rescuing blankets. Uh, these are basically uh, blankets which are normally used when a person uh, was in a car accident and you cover them up with this to cool them down or uh, keep them warm. These blankets let heat through uh, one side and don't let it through the other. Uh, so if you find the proper side uh, to face outside, you can uh, put them over your tent and this allows you to sleep in, because normally tents uh, get really, really hot with the first uh, morning light. So these rescue blankets have been a godsend on Old Town. They don't cost a lot and I strongly recommend those. Uh, they are also uh, watertight, so it will improve the performance of your tent uh, in rainy conditions. Uh, and they have multiple different uses. An extremely important item uh, to have with you, and I have this in my pack, which I have on me all the time, is a headlamp. A simple headlamp like this, with a simple switch, one time it's on, other time it's off. There are also some headlamps which do all sorts of blinking stuff. Uh, in my experience it's just very annoying. Get a simple one. This one is from Miltech, I think it costs like 10 or 15 euros um, and it's tiltable and the huge advantage of a headlamp versus a lamp which you have to hold or versus tactical lamps which go into your pocket is that you have your hands free and at the same time you're always uh, having your uh, light where you're looking so headlamps are very important I know a guy who literally broke his neck because he didn't have a lamp with him so uh, he survived he also wasn't paralyzed uh, but don't make the same mistake. Rough terrains on which post-apocalyptic LARPs take place can be very dangerous, especially at night where you don't see where you're going. So always do have a lamp on you, even if you're like a sneaky character or whatever. Uh, this is a must. Alright, talking about stuff that you're wearing on yourself, I also have a watch. It's just convenient. Another important thing to have is a thick jacket. Even if you're going uh, to a LARP where it's uh, very hot, such as Old Town, and even if you're going to Wasteland Weekend, in the desert it gets cold at night. So having a thick jacket is uh, really important in my opinion. And also you can roll this up and it makes a nice pillow. I have a belly pack on me. This is really comfortable, this allows me to save a lot of time because in here are all the items I'm using all the time. So I just have it on me, I don't have to go to my tent and get it. I also prefer belly packs as opposed to leg packs. This one is for the leg, I used to use this. Uh, but uh, as soon as it's loaded and you're running, it's swaying around, it's really uncomfortable. So carrying it on the belly is my uh, choice. And I also have a water expansion here. I can operate this with one hand. It's a, a bottle like this, which you can open and close by pulling or pushing. So as you see, I'm using just one hand. Theoretically, I could be holding up my shield while I'm having a drink in the middle of the combat. It didn't happen yet, but I could do that. Uh, the way uh, this is attached is that I've um, added some Velcro stripes here so I could actually detach this. But I actually carry this water bottle on me throughout the whole LARP. And uh, when those bottles get dirty, I just uh, throw them into the trash. They get recycled done. I could also buy an expensive bottle like this, uh, but in uh, my experience uh, they get so dirty you don't want to have that stuff around anymore. Very useful, a thick large Shemak scarf or some other sort of scarf. It can uh, give you some warmth and coziness and also when it's hot you can wrap it around your head and you can pour water on it and it will cool you down. Very useful. In case it rains really heavily and you stop giving a hell about how you look and just want to stay dry, cheap plastic raincoats. Shoes! Good shoes have to protect your feet, keep your feet dry and not cause your feet to like super sweat and get moldy or whatever, stuff like that. So just get good high quality trekking shoes. These are the shoes I'm gonna be going to the Zombie Apocalypse LARP this year. Uh, they provide uh, solid protection, it's a good sole, they're uh, pretty much uh, the shoes for traveling, rough terrain, hiking, whatever. Uh, they also provide angle protection. And uh, these, in my opinion, have the perfect uh, weight to protection ratio. Now there are also shoes like this. This is, of course, just some canvas here. 
and this does not, in my opinion, provide sufficient protection. There might be some rusty spikes poking out of the ground or whatever. Again, post-apocalyptic life events tend to take place on rough terrains, which can be potentially dangerous to your feet especially. On the other end of the spectrum, German Army standard boots, the shoes with which I have uh, so far uh, survived all of my post-apocalyptic LARPs, but I've decided, decided to upgrade to lighter shoes because these are designed for soldiers carrying heavy loads uh, for long periods of time. They provide excellent ankle and foot support, but it comes at a price. They're super heavy and they're not that light to run around in or uh, to jump, uh, run from zombies or raiders or whatever. And you're not gonna be carrying uh, heavy loads all the time and marching for the whole day, so you don't really need this much protection in my opinion, which is why I'm going with shoes like these. Another advice about shoes, use shoe cream and wetness blocker products to uh, make your shoes even more water resistant, because having wet feet sucks. I uh, have never given a single fuck about how exactly my shoes look, because it's much more important uh, that they protect my feet and keep my feet dry. So stop worrying about the looks of your shoes, especially if you're a newbie, just go practical. Carrying on with the stuff you wear, this is the roll inside of a bag. And what the roll is, is basically all of my clothing that I'm gonna be taking with me to this LARP rolled into one roll. It allows me to save space. By laying out all of your items like this, instead of folding them or instead of doing stuff like this with your socks, you save up a lot of space, so it can all be in one compact roll. So you just lay it out, and here are all the items I'm gonna need. So it's uh, amount of LARP days uh, equals the amount of socks. So one pair of socks, two, three, and four. I'm going to a four day event, so I have four pairs of socks. Same goes for the underwear, three, four. And for the t-shirts, I have three of them. It's uh, two shirts plus uh, this long sleeve. And here are my uh, distressed pants. It's for the zombie apocalypse LARP, so they aren't super fancy pants. And I'm wearing another pants on me right now. I only use uh, this second pair of pants in which I actually arrive as a backup or in case uh, my primary character dies and I need to change. So when I've worn something, let's say I've worn a pair of socks for a day and they're sweaty and disgusting, I'll just put it into the dump bag and be done with it. And then when I arrive home, I uh, throw everything out of the dump bag straight into the washing machine. I always change my underwear and my socks and my shirt when I go to sleep. This way I will be sleeping in nice dry clothing. Moving on to water, what I have here are four one and a half liter bottles. So I'm taking those to an event which is four play days and um, one and a half liters is half of what you should be drinking on a LARP event per day. You should be drinking at least three liters. The reason I'm not taking the full water supply with me uh, is because on the most LARPs you will be able to buy some water when you are there and you will also often get water for free when you're there. But uh, I'm still bringing something with me, so before you go, please inform yourself, uh, will water be available? And if yes, still bring some with you, because it might take some time until the supply chain is working, or there might be a disturbance in the supply chain. So uh, having some reserve water on you is always a good idea, especially if you're going to a LARP in hot climate. And this picture is actually from us uh, going for water during one of the Old Town LARPs, which was awesome. I always carry a compact set of eating utensils in my EDC pack. There is a uh, spoon here, there is a fork here, and there is an army can opener here. If you don't know how to use this, uh, just uh, look for army can opener on the internet. This is what soldiers are usually carrying, because obviously no one is EDCing that big thing that you probably have in your kitchen. The reason I always have this on me is because I might uh, be somewhere where there is something to eat on a LARP, and uh, if I don't have the eating utensils I will not be able to eat it, and I love eating. For the same reason, also in my EDC pack, 
is one portion of uh, conserves, something small and light. Uh, what you can also take are actual survival uh, rations. I used to carry those, uh, I don't anymore because they're kind of expensive, uh, but it totally is an option to keep you fed. I'm always ready to have a snack and on a LARP you often get caught in such a situation where you totally forgot to eat or couldn't eat or maybe you're caught behind the enemy lines or whatever uh, and you are hungry and thirsty. So this is why a small pack of food and water is always in my EDC. Uh, as to how much uh, food you actually need for a lab, of course, depends on how much food you will be able to get there. So uh, what you see me having here is the food that is for me for the entire zombie apocalypse LARP which is a four day LARP plus arrival plus departure day so uh, basically for me it is six days uh, counting the day I arrive and the day I leave so on each day I eat one of these in the evening during the day I will eat this in the morning and this somewhere in the day Complementing all of my canned foods with uh, crackers like this or this or this Also, yeah, the protein bars uh, Some meat some dried meat uh, that doesn't get bad uh, I really prefer beef jerky, but salamis like this also do the job um, Basically, I also eat these in between the meals uh, also cans uh, of food can be used uh, for barter on any post-apocalyptic LARP So you might want to scratch up the can a bit so it's more ambient So if you still can carry something bring a few more cans Oh sh some sweets Because um, again on a post-apocalyptic LARP you're gonna be running around a lot burning through tons of energy and uh, eating some sweets to replenish that energy quickly uh, is a godsend sometimes. You might be just coming out of an intensive combat situation and then you're super hungry because you didn't eat all day and then you just need some energy before diving into another combat which you don't want to miss. So uh, on a, a LARP like this it's all about time, it's all about using all of your time to enjoy the situation as much as possible so you need some energy pills like this. These are uh, waffles with caramel, by the way, but you can use whatever sweets. I also really prefer canned food, which I can eat regardless of circumstances, over those types of foods where you need hot water to uh, eat it at all. Uh, if there is a campfire, I will open the can and warm my food uh, at the campfire, but if there isn't a campfire and there is no hot water, then I will still be able to eat. In case you don't uh, have anyone in your group with a camping cooker, like a gas cooker, or if there is no campfire but you do need some warm uh, water or to warm up your food, there are compact uh, stoves like this. So it's folded and then you can unfold it. And uh, inside of it uh, there is usually a pack of solid fuel. So those solid fuels look like this. Of course you use just one or two of them at the time. And uh, this enable you to uh, make some hot meals or some hot water. However, this doesn't replace a gas cooker or a campfire. It's more of a, a emergency thing. I also always take a military flask like this with me. It's uh, also German army, last generation. And this is awesome. I can cook some water in this. And then I can fill it into this flask and throw a tea bag in there. I love drinking tea on post life events, especially in the evening uh, near the campfire. I also have this nice rooster themed uh, can here with different sorts of teas inside of it. Uh, here comes the toilet bag. So I have a plastic bag. I take this with me when I go to the toilet. And inside of that is a small roll of toilet paper. Uh, again, that thought of not being 100% dependent on other people. In the last three years going to the Zombie Apocalypse LARP and even before that, I never actually needed to use my own roll at all. However, you might end up in that one stall in which there is no more toilet paper or again the supply chain might get disturbed and you end up without toilet paper. So carry a small package like this. Um, talking about being nice to your butt. Wet wipes. Really good uh, also to keep all of your private parts clean. It brings the scent 
of uh, chamomile to your butt. Also inside of the toilet bag, a reserve pack of water. You see this uh, bottle is marked with an X, so I don't confuse it with my drinking bottle. Uh, it is not nasty water in there, but I still want to keep those two separate. And with a bottle like this, I could drip it like this, and it doesn't waste much water, allowing me to use uh, water to wash my hands efficiently. I always carry curd soap with me. The reason I'm using curd soap over that um, liquid soap that you are probably having in your bathroom right now uh, is that washing of curd soap off your hands is much much faster. You don't need that much water. And also I usually take several packs of hankies with me. A deodorant stick, toothpaste and toothbrush. Uh, don't bother with those compact army toothbrushes, whatever. Uh, a regular one works just fine. It doesn't take up a lot of space in the first place. Nail clippers and small scissors. Very handy, especially if you're staying for like a week. Moving on to tools. Bringing a multi-tool might be a good idea, although all this time I pretty much managed without one. What I always do have on me on a postable arp or a festival, however, is a small survival knife like this. It's really handy for a million applications. However, when you carry a knife, be really careful to secure it. You see that uh, mine is secured. Even if there is a zombie like crawling on top of me, they will not accidentally pull it because of the security features. Uh, you really have to watch out, especially on a LARP. Also, never leave your uh, real uh, sharp tools uh, or weapons lying around uh, somewhere where someone might confuse them with LARP weapons because that might create a dangerous situation. You are probably gonna be handling nasty and rough stuff that might damage your hands. So some sturdy work gloves are pretty much a must in my opinion. Zip ties, as you see here in two different sizes. And duct tape. You are gonna need this no matter what. Uh, and these are especially useful for repairing your outfit really fast. I also bring uh, some thread and needle with me, however, most of the time you don't want to waste time on sewing. I personally hate sewing in the first place, so I repair my outfit with a zip tie if I can, and most of the time it works. Medicine! So uh, you will probably not have to bring your paramedic kit to a post herb. Chances are there are gonna be some trained medical personnel there already. However, you also don't want to waste your time and everyone else's time by having to go to the medic for every small injury, every anything minor. So what I have in here is disinfection spray and band-aids. Uh, and I also have anti-diarrhea pills. I never got a diarrhea yet on a LARP. But in case I do, I don't want to sp uh, spend my time on the shitter. I want to spend my time playing, so anti-diarrhea pills are important. Uh, also, I have in here uh, a trauma gel, which, you, which is good for your joints and muscles in case you sprain something or in case you just uh, overburden your muscles with a too heavy load. I also have elastic bandages, which I can wrap around, for example, my wrist, and that stabilizes it a bit in case I injure my wrist. I personally also have anti-allergy pills because I'm allergic to a shitload of dust, which uh, tends to be around the most postable herbs, or and or to pollen, which also fly around during the season. Depending on where you're going, you might want to bring sunscreen. And uh, I also have an anti-mosquito and tick spray here. This helps against ticks only for two hours, so be cautious with it. It doesn't remove all the danger. In order to avoid getting bitten by a tick, also tuck your pants into your shoes so that ticks have harder time getting to your body. So far I was also never bitten by a tick on a LARP, but it might happen and getting bitten by a tick is one of the last things you want. It's disgusting at best and at worst they carry bad diseases, so use anti-tick spray. Uh, talking about diseases and other stuff like this, uh, if you're going to a post-apocalyptic life event, please make sure that you also have tetanus vaccination. There is a lot of uh, rusty, dirty stuff. You might get injured, you might get infection in your blood, you don't want to get tetanus, so get a vaccination. And now, last but not least, let's talk about your LARP kit. So if you're going to your LARP for the first time, then you don't need a huge gun, you also don't need 20 different guns. Uh, what I'm usually going with to the zombie apocalypse is just my shield and my machete. I don't even have a gun. And uh, I'm not even a post up LARP newbie. This is just the way I enjoy doing things. So um, on my first LARP, 
I also brought just this gun right here. My Tokyo Marui Desert Eagle. It's an airsoft gun. Uh, so instead of getting a huge sniper rifle or whatever, I just invested into a small but uh, nice gun which was compact enough for me to bring it to the LARP in the first place. On some LARPs, uh, when you die, you're dead, so your character is dead. And to get back into the game, you have to have uh, clothes for your second character. Uh, for example, that's the case on all of the Lost Ideas LARPs, such as Zombie Apocalypse or Fate or Resistopia. That does not mean that you have to replace every single item you're wearing, uh, including your underwear. Uh, you can keep your shoes or your pants uh, or whatever basic uh, outfit parts, as long as you are changing the really remarkable outfit parts. Another thing that I recommend carrying on any post-apocalyptic LARP is a small portion of artificial blood. In fact, you are even required by the event rules on almost any LARP to do this, and you get injured a lot, or someone else might get injured uh, in-game, of course, and then you apply the artificial blood for full effect, so uh, do carry a small amount. On the most LARPs you will also need an OT marking, which stands for out time. And out time is when you're not in the game right now, so that other players know to avoid you, not to interact with you, basically to ignore you if they are in the game. In my EDC pack there is this piece of fabric with an X on it. I can fold this to a really small size, like you basically put this uh, X here, and this way people know to ignore you. On some LARPs, like the Old Town LARP, a uh, construction site vest like this, is basically uh, the OT marking, so if you're wearing this, other people will not shoot at you, they will not talk to you. Alright guys and girls, I hope this episode was useful for you. Have fun on your first post-apocalyptic event, stick together, don't die, subscribe to my channel. Also, please keep in mind that this video was possible only because of my Patreon supporters. You can also become a Patreon supporter by following the first link in the description. It would be patreon.com slash nucleusnail and every dollar helps me create more of these videos for you. I will see you in the next episode.